welcome back to our next video in our 1 Peter series. And today we're into chapter 3 and we're looking at this section under the title, We Are Missionaries. And most specifically, missionaries uh, in the context of marriage. And I'll flesh out what I mean by that in a moment. But as always, I really do encourage you to read this passage a few times yourself. Look out for any repetition or, or things that jump out as key ideas. As you read it, perhaps note down questions that the text might raise for you, things you're not sure of. And spend some time praying that God would open your eyes, that this wouldn't merely be an academic exercise, but that you would be seeking to know Him better so that you can live more fully for His glory and that you might teach those who you are going to be looking at this passage with to understand who God is and what it means to live as His people on mission for Him. Before we dig into these verses further, it's also important to remember that all of this falls under the umbrella of the new section that started in 2 verse 11 with a specific reference to 2 verse 11 and 12 where Peter says that we are to live such good lives for God's glory. And then following on from this, Peter spoke about what it looks like to submit in verse 13 of chapter 2 to every human authority. Um, so focusing on, on submitting to authorities in general and then he focuses in on slaves and also calls for this life of submission which we'll see coming out in this passage too. And then in chapter 2 verse 21 Peter says that we are called uh, to trace our lives on the life of Jesus. So it says, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example. And that example holds the idea of tracing our lives on the example that Jesus set us. So with that in mind, seeking to live such good lives for God's glory, tracing our lives on Jesus' life, with all that we've seen so far in chapter 2 about submission being key to that, then Peter says, in the same way, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. And that idea, submit, comes up again. And Peter is going to flesh out now um, what it means specifically for wives to submit. And then he'll focus in on husbands too and what it means for them to live properly with their wives, honoring them, respecting them. So... Our key focus in this section is on wives and husbands. The key that Peter gives us in this section to show that he's linking this with what he's just said in chapter 2 is these words, in the same way, and in the same way. So that is pointing us backwards. So. Just as you want to live good lives for God's glory with those in authority and for slaves and their masters, tracing their lives on the example that Jesus has given us in the same way, wives, in the same way, husbands. So it's all under this umbrella. For wives specifically, there's a big focus on the way they live, their behavior, which links in, live such good lives. And there is a specific focus for uh, those who do not believe. So it's wives with Christian wives with unbelieving husbands. So if they do not believe this word about Jesus, that they may be won over without words. And that is by the way the woman submits. Now, submission in our world is a word that is heard and it is seen in a very negative light. But submission here is actually in the light of uh, chapter 2 verse 13, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake. Submission is not a belittling thing, but God has set his world up in such a way that there is, and we're all created in God's image equal, but with different roles. And in the marriage, husbands are to be the head of the home and wives are to submit to their husband's headship. That is not a belittling thing. And actually what Peter wants us to see is that a submissive wife 
is actually a beautiful life. It's by their submission that they adorn themselves, make themselves look beautiful. And so Peter digs into this idea that actually outward adornment, so elaborate hairstyles and jewelry and clothes, shouldn't be the things that make women beautiful. Now, Peter is not um, outlawing braiding your hair or putting on jewelry, but what he is saying, he's warning against uh, an, over, an inordinate preoccupation with your outer personal appearance. And he wants us to see here that actually it is the inner self. That is where the unfading beauty should come from. See, outward beauty will fade sooner or later. But the inner beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, the inner beauty of a woman being submissive is... A truly beautiful thing and this is something that we need to be teaching the women in our churches the women Christians who are, are, are in our small groups who we're interacting with that actually submission is not a belittling thing submission is what makes them look beautiful uh, our wives should hold on to that and seek to be God glorifying Wives, as they submit to their husbands, we should be teaching this to our daughters that actually it is the inner self that matters far more than the outward adornment. As Peter says, it should be that of the inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. And that's ultimately what matters. We want to live in a way that is right in the sight of God. And for women, for wives, that means submiss submission to their own husbands, not to other people's husbands. And then Peter gives us um, a reason word here, so that. And this is how it fits into the mission. Um, wives submitting to their husbands may be part of the mission, their mission to their husbands of winning them over without words so that they become Christians too. But actually, Christian husbands and wives um, as couples with the wife submitting is a picture to the watching world of how good marriage can be. And that is something that should be used to draw the watching world to this Lord so that they too might live for God's glory. Peter points back to the woman of the past and he says that it their hope in God is actually seen in their submission. Which means that if you aren't submitting as a wife, it is a sign that perhaps your hope is in the wrong place. And that's a, a big warning. That Peter then gives this example of Sarah, who showed her hope in God by submitting to Abraham, her husband. And he says, and you are her daughters. You are those who also have your hope in God if you do what is right, in this case, if you submit and do not give way to fear. So this massive focus on um, how wives' mission to the watching world is shown by them being submissive. Uh, a beautiful wife is a submissive wife. Beautiful to her husband, beautiful to the watching world, beautiful to God and actually glorifying to God. Then Peter focuses in on husbands and he says, in the same way. So again, linking back to this living such good lives and tracing your lives on the example of Jesus, he says, in the same way, be considerate. And this word considerate could be translated as live with your wives in an understanding way. Now, this is something that is notoriously difficult. Uh, women are created by God to be wonderfully complex. So it's not always easy to, to understand them. But that's the call. Peter was a married man. And under God, he knew that he had been called as a husband to live with his wife in an understanding way, to be considerate of her. And that's going to 
that means work. We need to take time as husbands to study our wives, to, to know what makes them um, happy, to know how we should be treating them in a way that is going to bring glory to God. As we, as we trace our lives on Jesus, what's it going to look like for us to be considerate? So we need to be husbands who study our wives and to treat them with respect. Uh, that's actually quite a weak translation. The word is beggar. It, it's honor or as precious. Uh, we should be treating our wives as those who are incredibly precious. When Peter says the, the weaker partner here, the, uh, the word is the, the weaker vessel, um, and it's the idea that women's bodies are, are physically weaker than men's. That's the way God has made us. And this isn't a bad thing. It's not a belittling thing. But the way God has made us is that physically men are generally physically stronger than women. And so we need to be treating our wives as incredibly precious and looking after them, honoring them, not using our physical strength in a negative way, but using it in a way that shows that we love them. But then he also says, because they are also heirs of this gracious gift of life. Our wives are co-heirs of the promises of God. And so we should respect them. Our wives are, are those who have received this gift of life from Jesus. They are heirs of the promises. And so as husbands, we should view them as incredibly precious gifts from God. And as we treat our wives in this way, it is part of us living such good lives for God's glory, tracing our lives on the life of Jesus. And then Peter ends this section by saying, so that, so he gives us another reason there, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. See, if we aren't treating each other well in marriage, it actually impacts our relationship with our Father in heaven. It causes us to not be able to pray properly. And one of the things that flows out of this is that as married couples, we should be seeking to pray together, rejoicing in the fact that we are co-heirs of this gracious gift of life through our Lord Jesus. And as we pray together, we should be praying that our marriage would be a beautiful picture of the gospel to the watching world so that others would see us and that they would end up glorifying God on the day he visits us. Well, as you dig into this further, I trust that uh, it would be a challenge to your own heart. And I pray that our churches would increasingly be places where we are praying for our marriages, that marriages in our church would be a beautiful picture to the watching world of how good it is to belong to our God. And that as a result, God would get all the glory. So God bless as you dig in further.